welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Tessa from Tessa's Library. Today, this video is going to be part three of my March 2017 wrap-up series. Um, I have three books to show you today. The first book that I have for you today is The Book of the Maidservant by Rebecca Barnhouse. This is junior fiction, historical fiction. It's set in 1213 AD, and it is the story of jo Johanna, excuse me, who is the maidservant of a very religious woman named Marjorie Kemp. Marjorie Kemp was a real person, and she took several pilgrimages during the Middle Ages um, in the 13th century. And so this book is a fictionalized account of her maidservant and the pilgrimage that they took to Rome. I really enjoyed it. I, I love the Middle Ages and I love historical fiction, so those were two big pluses for me for this book. Um, but I really enjoyed the writing. I admit I didn't connect with Johanna as much as I really wanted to. Um, I, I didn't fall in love with the characters, I guess. Um, but I did really enjoy the writing style. I thought it was very historically accurate, which to me is one of the most important parts of a historical fiction novel. Um, I really appreciated the author's note at the end explaining like um, which parts she took from Marjorie Kemp's book and which parts were, you know, fabricated. If you're looking for an enjoyable read about the Middle Ages, I really did enjoy this one, but it didn't completely blow me away. The next book I read is Pip Bartlett's Guide to Unicorn Training by Jackson Pierce and Maggie Steve Otter. This is the second book in this series, and I really enjoy it. It is, it is very fun. It is about Pip Bartlett, who is um, a child, a girl who can talk to magical creatures. And she is staying for the summer with her aunt, who's a vet for magical creatures. Um, I read the first book last year and I thought it was really cute, so I really enjoyed it. And I, as soon as this one came out, I wanted to read it too. So this is obviously junior fiction. Um, it has really cute illustrations that keep you interested. I will say the first half of this book I found very slow and I was kind of struggling to remember why I liked the first one so much, even though I'm a big fan of Maggie Steve Otter. But after about 50 pages, which this book isn't very long, so it was a lot of the book, um, it really picked up and I was really engaged. I wanted to know what happened next. Um, it, there's kind of a mystery element to this book, you know, uh, kind of a whodunit that I found really enjoyable, although also very predictable. I did, I did figure out who did, who did the crime before um, Pip Bartlett and, and her friends did. But I just, I really like, um, I really like this this book and this series, I think they're very fun. I think kids are going to really enjoy them. And they have really cool illustrations that are done by Maggie Steve Otter herself, so that is really fun too. Okay, the final book that I read in March, I actually finished it on the very last day of March, my birthday, um, is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towels. I loved this book so much. I mentioned it in my last wrap-up video because I was currently reading it. It took me about two weeks to read. It's not that long. It's about, um, I think it's 460 pages, but it's not a book that I wanted to rush, if that makes sense. Like, I would never call it boring. I was fascinated. I couldn't put it down, but it was also a book that I like had to slow myself down. I didn't want to read it very fast, which doesn't happen to me very often. Usually I just speed through books, but this one just, the writing was so beautiful and it was so atmospheric that I just, I wanted to kind of savor it. So it was a book that I really enjoyed, but I couldn't read it very quickly. Um, it's the story of Count Rostov, also known as Alexander, and a hundred other names, because this is a Russian novel, who is put under house arrest at the Moscow Metropole Hotel in um, the 1920s under the Soviet Union. And he lives there. He's not allowed to leave the hotel. And he lives there for 40 years. And it's the story of his life in that hotel. And when I say that, you think, wow, that sounds so boring. He can't leave the hotel. He can't do anything. But it's not. It is a very character-driven novel, which is my favorite kind. So I loved that part of it. I fell in love with the characters, all of them, especially Count Rostov. I... I, I just, I loved everything about this book. I am, this is a library copy, but I'm going to buy a copy. I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to underline huge passages and then memorize them because the writing was so beautiful in every way. The characters were so beautiful in every way. I just, I absolutely adored this book. It was so good. 
It was so good. Um, I did have one tiny problem with it, which I'm going to tell you what it was so that you won't have the same problem. When I started reading this book, I thought that Alexander was about 40 years old and um, or maybe even older than that, 50 years old. And I'm reading it. And I'm thinking, wow, this just doesn't connect in my head. He doesn't really act that old. So yeah, I went back and reread the beginning. He's actually 30 when the book starts. And that's kind of important because like things don't make sense if you don't know how old he is. So once I figured out that he was 30, like the book made way more sense for me. But that was really the only problem I had with this book. Um, I haven't read Towel's other book, which is called Rules of Civility, but I really want to read it now. I don't even know what it's about, but I love this book so much that I just want to read anything that he's written. Um, so I read a total of 16 books this month. Um, three of them are rereads and 13 were new to me. And of those, like, of all those books, um, I had five that I rated five stars, which is pretty good. Five that I rated four stars, four that I rated three stars, and one that I rated two stars. So overall, I had a very exciting month. I liked most of the books I read this month, and I always like it when that happens. Um, so now it's April, and I am reading Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea by Barbara Demick. I'm about half done with this book. I can't put it down. Honestly, it was a struggle to stop reading this so that I could film this video because I am so fascinated by this book. Barbara Demick um, interviewed multiple people who have defected from North Korea and before she wrote this book and it is just horrifically fascinating. It's like a train wreck that you can't take your eyes away from because um, I thought that I knew a lot about North Korea but I had no idea how bad it was. Like this has just opened my eyes so much. If you are interested in North Korea or if you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend this book because it's about, like the subtitle says, it's about ordinary people. It's about the day-to-day -day people in their day-to-day -day lives and I just can't put it down. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment down below talking about one of these books or telling me what you're currently reading right now. Bye!